I saw an interesting post on the machine learning subreddit the other day, and to paraphrase it, it essentially went like this. Every day we see a billion new papers. Each one makes small tweaks or minor architectural changes to papers before it, and then it gets new state-of-the-art results. And now with this, we see around 100% accuracy on most of the tasks we train on. So the poster essentially proposed that question, is the field oversaturated? And it seems like they certainly thought it was. But today I am here to tell you that is unapologetically a bad take. I would argue that the field is almost not at all oversaturated and that there are still a lot of interesting research avenues to be discovered. So today I'm going to talk about three reasons specifically why I think that the field is not oversaturated. And the last one of these three reasons I think is especially good advice if you're trying to get into ML research or if you just got into ML research and you're still trying to figure out what to do. But before we dive into that, I do a whole lot of content like this around machine learning. So if it does interest you, do consider subscribing. To start off my argument, I actually want to play a little bit of the devil's advocate here first. Let's first look at the field of computer vision, which has had a lot of recent work, and we can point out some reasons why we might think that it's oversaturated. For example, we can already create images that are essentially photorealistic and also artwork that is really stunning. And if we also look at other sorts of tasks, for example, if we look at the ImageNet benchmark, which has a thousand different classes of images, we can see that the top five accuracy for state-of-the-art methods is very close to 100%. And in natural language processing, we do have models like GPT-3 that can create text nearly indistinguishable from actual human text. And at this point, essentially every company and their opponent needs to have their own big NLP model. It's the new hype. And most of these NLP models are general in the sense that they can perform tasks from classification to sentiment analysis to text generation to machine translation. I don't think it's at all an understatement to say that these models are very impressive and they've come a long way. But, and this is a very big but, if we look at just those areas of research and metrics alone, we end up getting a very narrow-sighted view of the state of the field. So the first reason that I think the ML saturation argument really doesn't pan out is that, well, remember how we were saying that most benchmarks nowadays have 100% accuracy? Well, that's just not true. Have you ever seen how a reinforcement learning algorithm performs in real life? Even if we look at natural language processing, which I do think is one of the most saturated areas of ML research, we still have a long way to go until we match human performance on a large number of benchmarks. Here on the side, you can see a few graphs that show how human experts, which are colored in red, compare to other state-of-the-art models, which are in all the other colors. And what you'll notice is that in the vast majority of these tasks, we're still a good ways away from human performance. And this difference is especially pronounced in areas that we would expect to require a higher level of intelligence like logical reasoning and mathematics. But even if it was true that we were near human level accuracy on most of these benchmarks, and this is true for some cases, for example, in image classification, I think we are near that level, if not already above it. Well, we still have to remember that at the end of the day, these are just benchmarks. And this brings us to the second reason why I think ML research really is not oversaturated. And that's if we look at most of these benchmarks, they typically measure a model's performance in a very narrow scale. And on top of that, most of these benchmarks have their fair number of flaws. And don't get me wrong we do absolutely need a way to measure the performance of our models, but how are we supposed to measure performance on something like a logical reasoning task? Sure, you can ask your model a range of questions or have a range of example inputs, but even then, how do you grade the answers? For example, in logical reasoning, lots of times you can give a number of answers that make sense or even just word something slightly differently and that would suddenly make the answer invalid. And in computer vision where we're often generating images, how are you supposed to measure how realistic an image is? Or is realism even what we're shooting for? How are we supposed to measure how artistic an image is? These are not easy things to measure. Sure, one way to solve this is to have humans measure the performance of these models, but running human evaluation is a very costly thing that you can't always do. Not to mention, even humans have their biases. If I put two very similar images next to a number of people and ask them which one looks more realistic, well, you're probably going to get some different answers. Many of the qualities we want to see in our models often are subjective, which means that there isn't going to be a 100% way to objectively measure the results. While benchmarks are a very important tool for measuring the performance of our models, we have to remember and be cognizant that they're not the end-all, be-all of goals, and that they are just a useful approximation of 
how well our models are performing. And finally, we come to the third reason, which I think is the most important reason in this argument as to why the ML research field is not oversaturated. And this has to do with an incredibly narrow focus on very specific problems within ML research. If you were to ask me a more specific question, for example, is NLP big model research oversaturated? Well, in that case, I'd be a lot more inclined to say maybe yes. And the same there goes for a few other topics, for example, image classification, maybe that's also oversaturated. But one thing to notice is that throughout this entire video so far, I've really talked primarily just about natural language processing and computer vision. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other topics in machine learning research, but why am I so focused on those two? And it's because that's where the bulk of the research is. But when we open up the field of ML, there's really so much more to be discovered. There's so many smaller labs working on interesting ideas that run tangent to these or that are completely different that really open up the waters for a lot of groundbreaking work to be done. For example, are you familiar with generate and test as an alternative to backprop or with graphical networks for memory storage or spectral methods in ML or behavioral transfer without using transfer learning or even entropy based exploration and reinforcement learning. And that's five things I just listed there that I'm going to take a guess and say you have probably never heard of or at least probably never heard of the majority of those. And the reason why is because, well, they're very niche areas that have to do specifically with my area of work and also some of the areas of work that my department are doing. And I can certainly guarantee you that these areas of work are not oversaturated. And you might be like, Eden, well, that's because those methods just don't perform as well as state-of-the-art methods. And you know, you would be partially right. Part of the reason that these smaller, more niche methods don't get as much coverage is because they don't have state-of-the-art results. But that does not mean that these methods are necessarily inferior or that they will remain inferior in performance forever. As a matter of fact, a lot of the reason that we see certain methods taking off and becoming state of the art is because there's so many people working on them in the first place. Once you have one little breakthrough, often a bunch of people will pile onto a topic and that will generally boost the performance up of those methods a whole lot. A lot of people like to flock to one method when new state of the art results come out. But behind the scenes, there are so many interesting ideas being explored and so many interesting ideas that haven't been explored yet at all because either no one's thought of them or more likely no one's just put the time in to do them because they're so focused on other soda methods or also just because the space of the field that we work in machine learning is very vast and it would be impossible to try everything and to give you an example of this we can look at something that's incredibly popular nowadays deep learning deep learning was actually invented decades ago but it never took off until 2012 when someone finally had a breakthrough and then a bunch of people flocked to it and i'm not saying that people shouldn't flock to it clearly deep learning has given us incredible results. But the reason that after multiple decades, we could get these results, sure, a large part of it was because now we have more data and compute. But another reason was because a lot of people put the work in to get it to where it needed to be so that it could be state of the art. And just like deep learning was a hidden gem, I guess you could say that was rediscovered. I'm sure there are plenty of labs out there working on ideas that are also hidden gems that are just yet to be discovered. And on top of that, many ideas that haven't been explored yet at all that are waiting to be discovered. I would be very surprised if there weren't a lot of hidden gems just sitting in older research or these smaller labs that don't get nearly as much attention as many of the more popular methods out there. There was one comment on that Reddit thread that I really liked that expressed this idea very elegantly. And it essentially went like this. Imagine there's a hundred people on a beach searching for seashells right next to each other but the beach is a mile long. And that's essentially where machine learning is right now. If you are looking to get into research, there are many ideas to be discovered and explored, and I wish you the best of luck. If you found this perspective or video interesting, do consider subscribing to the channel, it means a lot. But thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you next time.